Here we are laying out uh, four images on a panel. Uh, each image has the same aspect ratio, meaning it has the same uh, width to height ratio. We're doing this in uh, CS3, Illustrator CS3, uh, which uh, the controls and functions are in the same place as in um, later versions. Uh, and with just the only exception being this is on Windows and not on a Mac. I have already made a page, uh, created a page. Uh, that page is in the portrait letter format uh, at 300 pixels per inch uh, RGB. So first what I'll do is open my uh, first image, but in this instance you don't open, you place the image and that's to uh, prevent uh, Illustrator from slowing down because uh, it has too many images and it has memory issues. So I'll place uh, the first image, the image at the upper left, image A, and do that first. So here's my image. Uh, it's surrounded by an outline. Uh, to show that it's selected and I want this image to go into nature and I looked at the author's guidelines for nature and it says that if I want a double column then I can make the width at 183 millimeters and generally you only care about one of the two dimensions in, in publication it's the width. Uh, 183 can be divided by two since I have a four panel two across, two down, and so, but because I want some white space in between, I'll round it off to 180 millimeters, and therefore each image will then be 90 millimeters across. So to do that, while it's selected, I can double click on the transform uh, panel, and in the transform panel, I can type uh, 90 millimeters in. Now note that there's a link tool with a bracket you want that bracket on so that when you change the width, it also changes the height. And if you don't have millimeters, then you can go in under edit down to preferences. And in the Mac, that would be illustrator preferences. And you can't see the drop down list, but on the drop down list, there's units and display performance. And in that dialog box, you can set your unit of measurement. Uh, to millimeters or to your desired unit of measurement. So I'm going to type in 90 for the width and then I'm going to click just anywhere else on this palette to then cause the image to uh, enlarge in this instance. And then with my selection tool active I will just click and drag it into place the very top uh, left of the uh, page. So now under File Place, I'll open my second one. And you'll note that this is a lot bigger. It overfills the, the uh, 8.5 by 11 inch letter page. Doesn't matter. I can simply type in a width of 90 and it will go to the exact same size. It just happened to be taken at twice uh, the number of pixels across and down and I'll move it approximately into place and we'll fine-tune this later and then I'll do the same with the remaining two images place here's my third image I'll type in 90 millimeters click anywhere roughly move that into place and then uh, under file place I'll choose my fourth image type in 90 millimeters for the width and then roughly move that into place now to align these uh, if you go under view you can show grid you can show a grid once the grid is shown, then you have grid lines against which you can uh, line up your images. I'll zoom in by clicking on the magnifier tool and then clicking on the image. 
Now I'm going to want to zoom in as far as possible so that I can see the individual grids. And you can see that between image A in the top left and image B in the top right, that you have one, two, three, four, five grids. And that looks okay, and so I'm going to stay with that. Uh, it, for the other two images, we need to also align in the same fashion. Now these are already aligned, but just to show you how you do it, I'm going to click on the selection tool here, as you've already seen me do, and then click on the image next door to image A to align that. So if it was out of alignment, then I'd simply drag it into place and, uh, and get it uh, to where I think it needs to be. Now you'll see that it isn't aligned along the, the bottom here. So if I click on the arrow tools, I can move it down. If the arrow tools don't work, I can click on the shift key and the arrow tool, tool and it will. Uh, it's a little bit of a bug in Illustrator. And so it's in the same fashion, I can align image A with image C. Uh, if this were out of alignment, I could simply drag it into place. Now, because there's a half here, I count one, two, three, four and a half. One, two, three, one, two, three, four and a half. And we'll get that into position and uh, align the one next to that to the same positions. Uh, uh, I made a mistake here, as you can see, and should have moved this one over at one more square. Uh, back to the five position. I'm going to use my arrow keys, shift, arrow, uh, move that down to the halfway position, and then do the same uh, with this one so that this one is aligned as well. So now they're all aligned, and if you zoom back, so click on the magnifier tool, hold down the Alt or Option key, and zoom back, you can see that they're all aligned. Now, you have to be really careful about making an evaluation at a distance because computer screens do not give you very accurate resolution uh, vertically and horizontally. They don't give you the same resolution. And so it would be useful to turn off your uh, grids, go down to hide grid, and, uh, and then to deselect everything. And then you can see that it's, it looks pretty good as far as uh, the uh, spacing, but you know absolutely that the spacing is correct. And then to uh, save this image, uh, be sure to see the video on saving out of Illustrator. It will tell you then how to crop this image and then to save it.